All right, let's get started. So what do I have here? I have a very boring picture of my synthesizer, the OP-1. And I was just been doing a lot of reading on Lightroom versus Silky Picks versus Iridient and everything like that. And I've been doing everything in Lightroom mostly just because again, I'm not a professional. So, uh, sorry, one in every thousand images I might print and that's where I'll get really meticulous about something. But I did notice, I downloaded Silky Picks. I figured, well, you know, let me try one of these other raw converters. And uh, you know, there's there's Iridient and Capture One and all this kind of stuff. But I figure, what does Fuji want me to use? Because they would know better than anybody else. Uh, and obviously they have the raw converter from Silky Picks as a free download. So I just want to take, I went ahead and I took some sample shots of this uh, OP-1 here on a tripod. So this is on a tripod. This is using the X-Pro2 at 27 millimeters at f2.8, 125th ISO 400. I know it's underexposed, but this is not, uh, this is not, the, that's, that's not that test. We're testing something else here. So I'm going to just zoom in here uh, one to one. Add this. Uh, okay. looks pretty good. looks pretty good. But I'm going to show you something. And, uh, you know, I was never, I've never been a pixel peeper until now anyways. So here it is at 100%. So I'm going to grab silky picks over top here. And we can take a look at that at 100%. You're not going to see too much at 100%, especially through YouTube, uh, through the through the compression. It's hard to tell, but let's let's zoom in here. So we're going to go right right away four to one. So this is in Lightroom with the raw file from the Expo Two, and I'll show you some things that are pretty apparent. So I'm going to bring Silky Picks into 400%, right over top, in the same region. First thing you'll notice, and I think you can see this in through YouTube here, is green. So we can see here that the green in Lightroom, so the bottom here, this is Lightroom, and this is Silky Picks. You can see that the greens are really washed out in this fine detail at 400% uh, here, 4 to 1. So you can see it's kind of washed out, kind of dirty looking. This green is different from this green, which is different from this green. And uh, you can tell the same thing up here. Obviously, this is the ink that's used on the key. Now, in Silky Picks, you can see right away that the greens stand out a lot more. There's more saturation in the greens, but you can also tell the difference between the in on this green and the out on this green a lot more than here. These, these greens here look both pretty dirty. Up here, you can tell that it's definitely green, but a different shade or different tone of green here. So that's the first thing I noticed. Let me show you a couple other things. And there's a reoccurring pattern here. Hello? Hey, Ashley. Yeah, no problem. So here is Lightroom. There's your green dial there. And if we move into Silky Picks, you can see that green is much more saturated and bright and contrasty with the uh, with the surrounding area. So again, just you know, so you guys, yeah, information. So it's the same same picture. Seven four five two RAF seven four five two RAF X Pro two ISO four hundred one twenty fifth two point eight twenty seven millimeter. So I showed you guys that. Uh, not pulling a fast one on you here. So there's the green comparison here. Okay, so here's a, something else I wanted to show you where it kind of really breaks down. And you can see here this com button. It's kind of mushy, mushes together. Again, I don't know if it's just the contrast, but you can see how the O and the M kind of hold up at 400%, where here it kind of mushes together a little bit of a halo mush around there. Something else I want to show you guys. Oh man. Again, it looks like just the structure stays together. Now this one's interesting because there's a little bit more haloing of the blue around the button here where this just looks more crushed 
and um, sort of mat it out. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, consistent throughout the colors. You can see the orange much brighter, more dull here. Green, much brighter, more contrasty. Blue, much brighter, more contrasty. I think that's the overall trend. Now, I don't know if you can see this through YouTube, but also, and we just look at the color of the unit itself. This is on the same monitor, so the calibration is the same. You can see that the Fujifilm version, sorry, the Silky Pix version, difference in color, it's a little it's less bright, I guess. It's less exposed, it looks like. Just the, just the overall color of the unit, of the uh, OP-1 unit here. It's a little brighter, it's different tone. Different tone of off-white. I think the uh, unit's like an off-white sort of bone color. But obviously I'm getting a lot of, uh, this was by a window, so I'm getting some light coming in from the window there. So yeah, pixel peeping for sure. You're gonna wanna use Silky Pix. And I think going forward, uh, maybe not for everything, but if I get a really, really nice shot that I really wanna keep that's print worthy, I am definitely going to bring it into Silky Pix here. It's kind of an interesting piece of software. What I like about it is there's you can just do film simulation uh, and color mode really easy here. So let me just, this is gonna be Silky Pix full screen. You can go in here and say color mode. Uh, okay, let's go film simulation, it's on Provia. So if we go standard color, if we just go standard color, it doesn't matter. We can still see that those colors are definitely brighter, more contrasty in the Silky Pix version, no matter what we do. So I think that's just better uh, overall rendering of the raw file. Ah, we can go Acros. There's Acros, Classic Chrome. Anyways, kind of cool and it's free and I think you should use it because if that's what Fujifilm is putting up on their website, then I that's what I think everyone should be using. All right guys, thanks for tuning in, see ya.